Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to spread some driveway stone. I've got this pile right here, which is actually two types of rocks. One has small stone one inch down to crushed. The other one is what we call like two and a half inch dirty. So it's mostly large stone, but it does have some fines in it. I bought 30 tons of this to expand my driveway right over here, and I probably still have at least 15 tons, if not 20, out of that 30 left. So we're going to use that around the Quonset hut to widen out our work area down there. This is the last project I did. Really turned out nice. The shadow is probably making that hard to see, but we've got a really a nice transition across here, and I think this is going to work great. Definitely, if nothing else, it's less upkeep than what I had before. On this section, I used some driveway fabric that I got from Vivor to put down under the rock. I still have some of that, but I don't think I'm going to use it today. So let's go take a look at where this is going and why I wouldn't use stone on it. So this is where the rock is going to go. So if you look right over here is the Quonset hut. And then over in this direction is the equipment building. And what I want for this area We've got rock in between our main shop and the equipment building, and then rock all the way around the equipment building. And I want this to be almost like a figure eight of rock that goes all the way around the Quonset hut, in between these buildings, and all the way around the other building. But to finish that off right now, I'd have to buy another thousand to $2,000 of rock. I haven't actually done any estimates on how much rock I need, but I know it's a lot. And then in an ideal world, I'd be buying that, say, $1,500 worth of rock and then another $500 on landscape fabric. And I just, I can't justify spending it right now. So I'm going to use the rock I have to try to make the most effective improvement that I can make. So when you look at it from down here, I'm kind of standing at the edge of where my rock runs. And the building is like 20 feet that way, the equipment building. I want this rock to extend all the way down to where you see that dirt pile and then wrap around the building. So in the summer, this works great the way it is. I don't need rock there. I drive around it all the time. But in the spring and the winter and part of the fall, this becomes a muddy mess. And getting things in and out of the backside of the Quonset hut is a problem. So what I'm gonna do, and I want this patch of grass right here next to the Quonset hut. But what I wanna do is take this area here and kind of scrape off all this weeds and grass that are growing up through with the box blade, smooth it all out. Then we're going to put down a base layer of rock and a top layer of rock. While I'm working on this, I want to talk about using geotextile fabric under the rock. Because my favorite guy to watch on YouTube, Mike Morgan, uses geotextile fabric under his rock. But it's expensive and it's got some drawbacks. So I've done plenty of talking. Let's get to work, and as I go through it, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Box blades kind of need to be heavy. I've got four suitcase weights hanging on this one to help it dig in a little harder, but it's still not breaking that up very well. So I'm going to put the rippers down and see if we can tear into that. I want to get all of the grass roots out. It's not grass, it's weeds, whatever's growing here. I want to get all that ripped out before we put rock down.
So here you see me putting the rippers back up. I only needed a few passes in each area with the rippers down to tear up the root system and loosen everything up. After that, I just drug that loose material out. This is not a case where I had to remove a thick layer of sod, just a little bit of weeds coming up through. It's a decently long drive up to the area I'm working on. So one strategy I had to make this quicker is to carry up one bucket full of rock and then load the box blade with rock and drag that up there on my way to cut the number of trips in half. On the other end, I would empty out the box blade first going forward and then use my traditional spreading method to lift the bucket up high and then drive backwards sprinkling stone out. I do it that way because it's hard to use a box blade on uneven ground. So if you, when you initially spread the stone, if you can spread it out in an even layer, it makes your follow-up work easier. So as you can see here, I'm doing my best to spread it in a smooth, thin layer the first time. Well, this is working great, but it's a little bit slow because it's a, a long trip from there to here. And I'm gonna switch to the skid loader. The tractor moves twice as fast, but you can put about three or four times as much material in the bucket. And I wanna get this project done. So I'm gonna switch to the skid steer and spread most of this. Then I may use the box blade to smooth it all out. We'll just see how that part goes. Working with the skid steer, I'm using basically the same strategy to spread that thin layer while driving backward. And it works about the same. I think maybe you can actually spread it a little bit better with the skid steer. But you have the same problem that you have with the box blade of trying to back drag with your bucket if you're on that uneven ground. About the only reason that made sense for me to switch machines here is the larger capacity of the bucket. The skid steer also would have done a really nice job of ripping those weeds out at the start of the project and setting up our base layer. Earlier, I mentioned that I've changed my mind a couple times on whether or not it's better to put down that geotextile fabric under your driveway stone. And opinions will vary on that. A lot of people say that it's meant to be a weed barrier, but I find it to be a poor weed barrier because grass and weeds will grow on top of your rock 
even if they don't grow through it. Because material and dust and dirt and grass clippings get on top and you're just going to get weeds anyway. The secondary purpose of that is to prevent the rock from sinking into the dirt. And they say sometimes it feels like your dirt is eating all your rock. And I haven't used it enough to really have an opinion on that. What I can say is it's a pretty big additional expense. And I think I may use it when I spread down around the Quonset hut, but I didn't use it today. The last concern with using that geotextile fabric is that you can snag it and tear it out when you regrade that area later. I've had a couple videos comparing a tractor to a skid loader for general use, cost, and just effectiveness at different tasks. And I haven't really compared them for spreading stone. And really, I kind of feel like this is a tie. It's not really that one is better than the other, but it's personal preference. Now what I'm doing now with the box blade shows a little bit of an advantage here because... Anytime you use a skid steer, it feels like painting a floor that you're walking on. Because after you spread one bucket full, you have to, in most cases at least, you have to turn around and go back for more. And every time you turn with that machine, you make big ruts where you turn around at. So unless you can find a way to not make any turns, it's kind of difficult to do that final dressing. So I got the box blade back out and finished it up that way. And as I did that, I also took a few more loads up to the other end. So I feel like this turned out pretty good. This area looks the way I want it to. The other area is nice and smoothed out. Everything looks great. The only thing I hate is what I knew when I started is that I didn't have enough rock to go down that path around the Quonset hut. Nothing I can do about that. I gotta come up with the money and invest in it if I don't wanna have a muddy work area. Till then, I may find myself making mud tracks in the grass on the outside of it instead of driving down my path. But it is what it is. Today was a nice day because I like to make progress every day of some kind. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I will put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.